So on day two, we decided to try and find a zoo. North Carolina has a zoo, but it was like two hours from Asheville, so we decided to go to the Western North Carolina Nature Center, which is actually accredited by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, so we knew it would be legit. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content. Let's get started. The tickets were $11 since we weren't locals, so I'm assuming that locals received a discount, but I'm not really sure how much. The nature center wasn't as expansive as most zoos would be, but it definitely served its purpose. This nature center featured many of North Carolina's native wildlife. We didn't see many animals out in the wild, so this was a nice opportunity to get to see them. Here, it looked like they had some sort of children's mining activity where they could find gems and metals, but that was closed due to COVID-19. Also, this area featured some farm animals such as chicken, goats, sheep, and donkeys that were part of a petting zoo, but also due to COVID-19, this was closed off. There was a boardwalk that hovered over the exhibit and we had to look over into them. I thought this was pretty interesting because from normal exhibit views, it's not always guaranteed that you will see the animals, but this granted us a better opportunity to see them and we weren't level with them. We also got to see a celebrity animal. This deer, Becca, was actually featured in the 2017 Oscar award-winning film Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, and she was trained by some of the keepers at the Nature Center to be in the movie. Black bears are found all over North America and are omnivorous, which means that they will eat both vegetation and meat. They're excellent climbers and can weigh over 500 pounds. They prefer forested areas, and both of these bears were donated to the Nature Center and must remain in captivity because they have imprinted to humans and do not know how to survive in the wild. The phrase birds of prey refers to raptors such as eagles, hawks, vultures, or owls that feed on vertebrae or animals with a backbone. The red-tailed hawks at the Nature Center are all there as a result of being struck by cars and left with various injuries. One with a damaged wing, one with an eye and wing injury, and one with an amputated wing. All are unable to survive in the wild, so they are now used as education birds for their programs. Red-tailed hawks are able to live near humans and are one of the most common hawks in North America. They eat just about anything smaller than them, and their pairs mate for life. Similarly, the great horned owl was also donated to the Nature Center after surviving a car accident and cannot be released because she cannot fly. Owls have uneven ear sockets so that they can pinpoint the source of sounds in the nighttime. Also, the tufts on their head may look like ears, but they're not. These tufts are primarily used for expression and camouflage, and they are found all over North America. Here we have a turkey vulture. They are scavengers, which means that they eat the remains of dead animals. They have an adaptation to this eating style, which is their featherless head since they have to stick it inside of a bunch of dead animals. And when they're scared, they actually can vomit the dead remains, which usually scares anyone or anything that's trying to attack them. I've been getting questions about why I support zoos, and as you can see, the animals that I've discussed so far are either being rehabilitated or are part of some conservation plan. Here's a notice from the AZA that I saw in the Nature Center if you all want to pause the video and read it, but I plan on debunking some zoo rumors in a later video. Bobcats can live in a variety of habitats such as forests, swamps, and deserts. Their range, however, has decreased greatly due to human impact. They mostly eat small mammals, and this bobcat is the oldest animal at the Nature Center, and since she was born at another zoo before she came here, she cannot survive in the wild. In the 1980s, the red wolf was declared extinct in the wild. Now, they only exist in one place in the wild, in the Alligator River National Wildlife Refuge in North Carolina. This population, though, only consists of about 20 individuals, which is super low and definitely not enough to sustain a species long term. Otherwise, there are 250 captive red wolves across zoos in the United States. They are carnivorous, meaning they eat other animals, and the individuals at this nature center are a part of the AZA's Species Survival Plan for the red wolf, so they are expected to mate 
to help preserve the genetics of this species. The red panda is the only animal that's not native to the North Carolina region, but they have an ancient relative that was. The climate of western North Carolina is very similar to that of the red panda in the forests of Central Asia, where they are native. They predict that less than 10,000 individuals exist in the wild, so they are listed as endangered with deforestation being a main cause of their decline. They primarily eat bamboo. The North American river otter actually has extra eyelids that act as goggles when they swim underwater. They can be found in many freshwater habitats, and the North Carolina population was brought back from extinction due to reintroduction programs. They are carnivorous and love fish and crayfish, among other things. This otter was found as a pup without a mother, and since he imprinted on humans, he was eventually donated to the Nature Center because he cannot survive in the wild. So those are a couple of highlights from the Western North Carolina Nature Center. My friends and I had an amazing time and I would recommend this site if you're ever going through or around Asheville. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more content. Thanks, and as always, restoring your faith in nature. Bye-bye.